Ladies and gentlemen, we're standing here with Mr. Hobgoblin and we would like to ask him a few questions. Mr. Goblin, do you think that seeing as how the Green Goblin has returned, that you will be in the MCU anytime soon? Of course I'm coming. That guy that's there? No, he's the knockoff. I'm the new, I'm the new cover. I have the plan. It's gonna work. Sinister Seven! Absolutely, absolutely. Now, Morbius has gotten his own film. Craven the Hunter is getting his own film. Do you think yours is upcoming? Of course it is. We're just keeping it down low. Can't let the spider kids all find out too soon. Now can we? Ladies and gentlemen, you heard it from the man himself. Keep your eyes open. R2D2, is there something you would like to say to the people? Can you tell us the secrets of the Empire? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you heard it here first. Say goodbye to the people. <laughs> now here we have a gentleman with a exceptionally well looking Pokeball. Now what, uh, what kind of Pokemon do you have in there? I actually have a trainer card, not a Pokemon. I was given it by the voice actor after she signed my Pokeball. Excellent. Are you excited about the autographs at the Comic-Con or is there something else you're looking forward to the most? Uh, no, we are now in the horror section of our autographing, so we're pretty excited to get that all finished up. Alright, are you a comic book reader or are you more a fan of the films? Just more of films. Now, in terms of Comic-Con, what are you most excited about? Uh, the horror part. Getting the autographs. Definitely. Any particular autographs you are looking forward to? Nick Castle and Brad Dorf. Those are my two. Got them. Super excited. But yeah, definitely worth it. The lineups weren't that long, which is actually amazing. That's pretty good. All right. On a scale of 1 to 10, how would you rank Brad Dorf amongst horror actors? Definitely a 10. He's in my, he's in my top 5. Definitely. Excellent. Thank you. No problem. On a scale of 1 to 10, how would you rate the Arcane TV show? A 9. Ladies and gentlemen, here at the Niagara Comic Con, we've ran into Spider-Man himself. And we'd like to ask him a few questions. Spider-Man, how are you enjoying the con so far? I'm enjoying it immensely. What is your favorite part about these gatherings? I love the smile on people's faces. Excellent. Now, do you intend to be doing any web slinging indoors here today? Uh, no, everything seems to be pretty calm and relaxed, so I don't think there's going to be any need for web slinging today. Now, oh, gentlemen, are you aware that there is a Super Mario movement in the works? I was not aware. We have not been told about this? Messed up, yo. Uh, Chris Pratt will be playing you, Mario. And uh, how do you feel about that? I'm devastated. Chris Pratt? I mean, he's pretty hot. He's pretty sexy, I have to admit, but he's evil. I don't like Chris Pratt. Oh, no, no, no. There is potentially something you might not be too fond of. He'll be playing Mario, but he cannot use an Italian accent. Oh, That's messed no. up! So I take it you're not going to see the movie? No, 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 no. We can't support this. Well, maybe. Wait, will you be calling your lawyer? I will be yes. calling my lawyer. Yes. And Charles. And Charles. Ladies and gentlemen, we're standing here at the Doctor Who exhibit at the Niagara Falls Comic Con. And the doctor himself 
We'll answer a few of our questions. Doctor, what can you tell us about this exhibit here today? Uh, this is the Doctor Who Society of Canada. I am very happy to visit my family here. Uh, we are raising money for the McMaster Children's Hospital. Uh, we are a group of volunteers all across Canada. Um, we have members from uh, all over Ontario as well as Quebec here today. Uh, and we travel to all throughout time and space to conventions like this, raising money for uh, children's uh, hospital charities like Sick Kids in Toronto, uh, Children's Hospital of Eastern Ontario and Ottawa, here at McMaster Children's Hospital in the Niagara region. And uh, yeah, that's, that's what we're here to do. Ladies and gentlemen, possibly one of the most famous vehicles in all of fiction, the Mystery Machine, live in front of you here at the Niagara Comic Con. We're going to speak to this fine gentleman. What can you tell us about this automobile? We're having fun with it. Here at Comic Con, a lot of fun. The kids are just loving it. A lot of fun. Have a look. Did you put this car together by yourself? Yeah, absolutely. How long did it take? About two years. A lot of fun. Here it is, ladies and gentlemen, an authentic replica of one of the most famous cars in entertainment, Kit. Now we're standing here with the owners of the beautiful piece, and we'd like to ask, what can you tell us about this marvelous vehicle? It's the very first car I ever bought. I got it rebuilt from scratch. It was a white and rusty car when I bought it, and in three years it got rebuilt into Kit. Everything came out of it and everything brand new went in it. Uh, it's almost an exact uh, replica of Kit from Night Rider, except for the seat cover material. What else can I say? I drive it all the time. A couple of times David Hasselhoff uh, drove the car and he posed with the car, he took pictures with it here at Niagara Falls Comic Con in 2015. And it's lots of fun to take it to all the shows, car shows, every... Uh, Weekend when it's sunny, it's dry, the car is out driving, it's not a trailer queen by any means, and I just let people enjoy the car. It brings lots of smiles in their, on their face, and uh, yeah, it's so much fun. Now, you say you drive this car often. Um, how often are you stopped by people who want to take pictures? Lots of times. I made the mistake of taking it to Niagara Falls, dressed for a drive one day, and I could not move everybody jumped in front of the car on clifton hill taking pictures it's a lot of fun and uh, i was stopped by police a couple times just to take some uh, pictures of the car but every time they scared me a lot because i don't do anything the car is fully route legal and uh, i don't drive with the red light on because that's illegal for the emergency vehicles but i do change the red lens to a yellow lens which is fully legal yep so, so with the yellow lens, it looks more like a car from the show. That's correct, but people don't notice because all they remember that the car had the light in the front. We're standing here with a wrestling fan, amongst wrestling fans. Uh, the question we'd like to ask you, we've had wizards in film franchises, we've had superheroes franchises. When do you think it's the wrestler's time to shine on the big screen? I think honestly anytime. Um, I'm a huge fan of wrestling. I actually go to a lot of local shows that are around um, the Hamilton area of Burlington and I find they're starting to become more popular and they are starting documentaries on these guys so definitely check it, check it out. Alright, now in terms of feature films, if they were to make feature films about a shared wrestler universe, who would be the best wrestler to kick it off? Oh gosh, that's a good question. Aaron, what do you think? Who would be a great wrestler to start off with um, for, for a film? For a film? What do you think? Okay. Like a biopic about them. For a film franchise like the MCU but with wrestlers. That's a tough one. There's so many good talent out there. Yeah. Like, would it be someone that's been around the business for a very long time, you like think? Like a classic? Because John Cena already has his films and stuff, so he, I think he would be, yeah, we don't need to worry about him, but... <laughs> 
That's actually a good one. I don't know. I would love to see, honestly, Rey Mysterio. He's been one of my favorites since I was a kid. So I I would choose him, to be honest. Yeah. You've heard it here, folks. Rey Mysterio is going to kick off the wrestling MCU. Keep your eyes open and keep your ticket money ready. We'll see you next time. <laughs>Ladies and gentlemen, we're standing here with Tony Stark incarnate, and we would like to ask him, how do you think the Avengers will fare without you? They won't. They, seriously, they're in serious trouble. See, see Roger got Thor? You think Thor? No, not, not Thor. No, no, they're doomed. Totally doomed. Ladies and gentlemen, you heard it from the man himself. The Avengers are lost without him. We're going to have to look for new superheroes. Ladies and gentlemen, we're standing here with a variant of Wanda Maximoff. We would like to ask her a few questions. How do you feel Wanda was portrayed in Doctor Strange 2? Oh, I feel like it should have been fleshed out a bit more. Um, and like described better as to why she was the way she was. It's almost like there should have been an in-between movie to kind of like go over what happened to her in between the end of WandaVision and then the movie. It just seemed too fast to where it was, personally. Do you feel her actions in uh, Strange to sort of undermine what she did in WandaVision? 100% yes. <laughs> Like, I understand why it happened, and that's why they needed to explain that better. Because we went from WandaVision straight into this movie. So it's like, it needs to be, it needed really to be un explained better as to how she got there. Because it undermined what she learned in WandaVision. Now, in the comics, uh, her father is Magneto. Mm -hmm. It has been stated that mutants will be appearing in the MCU. Do you think they can still find some way to make Magneto her father? It would have to be on another dimension, personally, because we're in this specific world of the multiverse, so it would have to be on a different dimension because of Sony and Marvel not being the same thing until recently under Disney everything is so all over the place and I think that's why they're trying to do this multiverse to try and bring everything together okay, so maybe fair. down the road maybe I really hope so because I like X -Men. <laughs> now speaking of multiverses uh, you just gave a excellent example how they could use another world where Magneto has always been her father and mutants have always been present how would you feel if the MCU were to switch from Earth 616 which they are focusing on now and over to another universe where they would have more freedom to play with, but these would not be the characters we've come to know so far. I would welcome that because it's just something fresh that needs to happen in movies in general. So it would be really, as long as the same actors, maybe, because we hold them so dearly to our hearts. Um, so that's why like some of the characters in the Multiverse of Madness um, were there and it was like really exciting because it was like the actors. So as long as they keep the same actors, I think it would work really well. And they would have to explain that it is another universe, maybe change up how they look a little bit, but it's still the same people. Uh, what next MCU film are you looking forward to the most? Ooh, what's coming out next? There's Thor, Ant-Man oh, 3, <laughs> Black Panther 2, and let's see, I think that's it so far. Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. Ooh, yeah, so Thor and Guardians of the Galaxy all the way. I also cosplayed as um, a female Star-Lord a couple years ago, so I love Star-Lord, so I'm really excited for that one as well. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you've heard it from Wanda Maximoff herself. There is much to look forward to in the MCU. Keep watching. Some people have been saying that they're disappointed in Phase 4 of the MCU. They feel it is the end of the MCU, the peak has been reached. What is your opinion on this? Oh, I, I think the MCU still has some stuff to offer. I, 
Yes, we are going in kind of weird directions, but I think I think we still have a lot to go. Are you excited for phase five? Yes, very. And how are you? How satisfied are you with phase four up till now? I'd say I'd say fairly satisfied. Like No Way Home, Multiverse of Madness were both amazing. Um, some of the shows have been really good, like Hawkeye and WandaVision have been great. So. It's going good! Ian from Big Belly Comics at the Niagara Falls Comic Con. We'd like to ask him a few questions. Uh, Ian, how are you enjoying Comic Con so far? I'm loving it so far. Yeah, it's been a fantastic weekend. What's your favorite part about these gatherings? Uh, my favorite part is seeing the creativity of people and the joy on their faces. Yeah, the creativity of the cosplayers and everybody who comes here is just super happy, right? Exactly. Now, since the MCU has taken off, um, superhero films are the biggest deal in cinema today. Have you noticed an uptick in fans after these movies have become more popular? Absolutely. It's certainly, a, especially an uptick in younger fans. Yeah, the movies have been a great way to get kids interested in comics and superheroes and, and the whole genre. As a, as a comic book fan yourself, how does it feel to see these characters that you've known for years on the big screen larger than life for everyone to see? I absolutely love it. Yeah, growing up growing up as a kid in the in the 70s and 80s, there weren't there weren't a lot of superhero movies or TV shows. So for me, this is this is like Christmas every every two months there's a new superhero movie or show. It's fantastic. It's fantastic. Now, there are filmmakers like Steven Spielberg and James Cameron who say the superhero genre is on its last legs. It does not have long to go. What is your opinion? Uh what I've seen of certainly, at least in the Marvel universe, is they're not really doing superhero movies. They're doing genre, like they're doing other movies using superheroes, right? Like the first uh, Captain America, the first Avenger was a war movie. Captain America Civil War was a political thriller or a spy thriller. Uh, so they're, they're doing it very smartly by not doing just superhero movies, they're using superhero movie, superheroes in other movies. Ant-Man, heist movie, fantastic, right? Ladies and gentlemen, you've heard it here from Ian himself and from Big Belly Comics. The superhero genre is here to stay because superheroes, you can fit them in pretty much any genre. And that's the magic of comics, ladies and gentlemen.